Hi. So I've made a start on mending this hole that we've got. And the first thing that I did was to trim away all the weft threads here that had frayed and fluffed up and that weren't doing anything. They were just getting in my way, stopping me seeing what was going on. So now I can see quite clearly the damaged threads sort of travel from here up to about here and from here to here. So that's the area that I'm working on, but obviously I'm going to extend it right round, especially in this length here, because this area is the, the place that we want to hold together. The other thing I've started to do is float some, some test threads through here. Um, I didn't have any white hemp that would match this, but I did have this cone and this cone, I've gone for this pale blue cotton, which is about the same weight. Um, you could use any thread, to be honest. So I do have these embroidery threads that you can buy from craft stores. And this would have done just as well, either on its own or split into three or four strands. Um, yeah, any thread will do. But obviously, this I'm hoping will give a, a nice effect. Um, it's not going to be an invisible mend, so I thought we'd go for something that would at least complement it. Uh, so what I've done here is I've tried following the pattern, which is quite easy to do because the cloth naturally, as you thread the, the needle through, the, the cloth naturally wants you to, um, to pick up the pattern that's going on. So here is the weft face of the cloth, and along here I essentially just went underneath these little blue loops here just pick my needle through and it slid right through here by the time i get to this part which is the warp face your needle wants to mostly pick up the the warp threads and go underneath so you don't actually see the you can see just where the thread there you don't see the thread as much. It's more invisible here. It's more hidden on this side. It's more exposed on this side. And that's the way that the pattern works. And so I've tried to be quite sympathetic to that here um, for these threads that I've started to put in. When it comes to mending this area, I'm not going to follow the pattern. For strength, I'm going to alternate and go over, under, over, under as closely as I can um, these threads because that's going to give it the most strength, the most structure and help to pull these sides together a bit more. Um, I had thought about stretching it onto an embroidery hoop, then it would give me a nice taut surface to work with. But actually, because the threads, there's so many warp threads and they're so close together, it might be easier for me to get the threads in situ with it being a bit looser so that I can manipulate them and open them up a bit more. Um, I found that as I was trying to sit these in, that you do have to sort of flick the threads up with your needle and then pull back to only catch the one that you want. Um, obviously, I haven't been um, I haven't been prescriptive with it. If I've caught two or three, it doesn't really matter. But just the overall idea that here, the threads float over and under more, that they... they they will go over more warp threads and then under one, over more. Here, I want it to go over, under, over, under, over, under, and that's really going to knit it together. Um, I've decided that I'm not going to just start at this end and put a thread and a thread and a thread and work my way along, because actually it's quite easy to sort of go offline that way. Um, and I want to try and get a nice even tension and a nice straight line following the the lines of the weft. So what I'm going to do is put threads in um, strategically in points across here and then I'm going to work to fill them in. Um, what else? I'm also going to start and stop them at different points in the cloth just so that they sort of feather in a bit more naturally. And um, here what I've started to do is I took a thread, is I've opened it up so that you can see, I took a thread and I I went in here following the pattern and then as I got to this point I've um, alternated a bit more over under over under and then I've taken it up to I think about here and turned round and came back down and I'm just putting these in in 
points across here because the idea is that then when I'm ready I can draw this in together and that's going to just pull this um, pull these warp threads into a nice line make sure that I've got them at the right tension and then at that point once that's held in place then I'm going to go in between and put even more threads through and maybe at that point um, I will stretch it on an embroidery hoop and then I'll just thread those threads through and they'll be the filler so this will be my this will be my structure that's making sure it's not stretching or pull too tight and then those will be my filler so um yeah that's about as far as I've got now um if you look at how many hundreds of threads there are there's a there's quite a bit of work to be done and um yeah, my biggest concern is that I want I want this part of the cloth to hold together and to not pull out like that. Um I don't want when I when I push put tension on it, when there's a baby's bum in there, I don't want the threads to be sh shifted open. I mean, it would still be safe, but it's just not going to look great. So I do want to make sure that that these are traveling right up here. And right down here but in terms of making them seem invisible actually if I just weave these ends in and then snip them off as long as they're all finishing at different points these ends are just going to bury themselves into the cloth and so it should it should be quite a sympathetic mend um, or uh, an area of, of interest a bit of a, a story there Okay, so hopefully if I can find a some kind of stand for my phone so that I can actually weave for you, I'll show you how I've been how I've been trying to work this and I'll uh, maybe get to show you a bit more progress. Okay?